So why T-splines? Well, T-splines adds many new workflows and tools to significantly improve flexibility, editability, and ease of construction of freeform surfaces in Rhino. Now, this is a big, big uh, improvement um, upon the tools that Rhino has available uh, for you in its um, standard package. And it's something that we um, here at Mode Collective um, are quite fond of. Um, a lot of the work we do, we are interested in, in uh, fabrication and, and ultimately using uh, various types of CNC machines to construct and um, or to uh, fabricate the parts and the geometry that comes out of T-splines is uh, uh, top, top of the line um, geometry. So it's a really good tool to have in your um, toolbox. Now the interesting thing um, is that T-splines is really the only software that combines NURBS and polygonal modeling methods together in a single workflow. So if you're uh, comfortable working with NURBS and you're comfortable working with polygonal models, uh, polygonal modeling techniques, um, T-Splines is fantastic because it, it really lies uh, right there at the intersection of those two um, and builds upon them, offering um, quite a lot of new functionality as well. Now, the ways that you can create T-Spline surfaces, um, here are a few. Um, from a primitive, for instance, you know, there's a host of uh, basic shapes that you can use right out of the box. Um, and you can use that simple uh, primitive to begin to model a more complex surface. And that's, you know, you can see that this is pulled from the um, T-Splines user manual and, you know, they label these according to difficulty, which I think is, uh, is, uh, is pretty cool. Uh, you can see that you can generate T-Splines from lines. You can work with T-Splines from lofted curves, um, skinning, converting from NURBS, or converting from mesh. We're going to look at a few of these this afternoon. So the key components um, behind T-spline technology are T-points, local detail, star points, and 100% NURBS compatibility. So T-splines, unlike NURBS, uh, can have partial rows of control points. These terminate in T-points. Um, that's where the name comes from, T-splines. So T-points, um, you can see here uh, in this kind of model of a frog that in a NURBS uh, model, surface model, on the left, this frog has 11,625 control points. Now on the right, the same model, um, or variation on that model, I guess you could say, in T-splines, this model only has 5,000 control points, 5,035 to be exact. Now, the reason why this is uh, really important is that it minimizes the number of control points, making it easier to create models, control surface smoothness, as well as decrease the file size and speed of editing time. So, you know, there, there's nothing worse than having a really um, fantastic model that you've worked out, but then find that it's extremely difficult to actually edit or work with that model because of the fact that it just has so many uh, uh, control points. This might give a little bit better um, uh, understanding of what's going on here. So if you notice, on the left, these are the types of, um, of T-points. And there are, there are a couple different types, but you know, for right now, we're just going to look at these two. You have control points, and then you have T-points. And control points, I'm sure you're all familiar with, if you've been using Rhino at all. Um, that's the kind of uh, bread and butter of, of working with NURBS. Um, but T-splines adds in a new type, which is called a T-point. And if you notice here, um, at this junction where there is a T, this does not um, continue into um, a row and column that is continuous. So this actually allows for a kind of abrupt um, termination of columns and rows. Now, what T-splines does with that is this. And you can see the way that it starts to interpolate um, the surface um, based upon the the T spline uh, T points. Now, you know this is all great uh, to look at in terms of a diagram, but really the way that you become familiar with this and, and begin to understand the subtleties and nuances of um, the tool, in this case T spines, is by getting your hands dirty, and that's exactly what we're going to do this afternoon. So the second is local detail. And it's really a direct result of the ability to create partial rows of control points within a single surface. 
So users can create a surface with varying levels of detail only where it's required. And that, that's a really big deal. Here you can see um, a little cup where partial rows and partial columns um, have been inserted in order to be able to produce um, this kind of little uh, indent indentation right here in the, uh, in the surface, which is locally defined. So when we look at um, the differences between NURBS and T-splines, um, you can see we have this UV space, but in NURBS we have continuous detail, right? And so the interpolation in the NURBS will be uh, throughout. Now with the T-splines, the local detail allows for the interpolation to be local to the actual um, T-junctions or T-points. The third are star points. Now star points allow a T-spline to be non-rectangular. And when a T-spline is exported to NURBS, it will split into separate surfaces at each star point. So here you can see a star point at the corner of this um, T-spline surface. And in the conversion process to NURBS, you'll see that we have here the patches right, of the NURBS within each of these segments, which is defined by the corner of this star. Or I guess you could say the corner of these, two, of these three quads, which is the star point. So if we, if we take a look at that a little bit closer, we can see that a single primitive or basic geometry in T-splines can have a few different types of points. Now, if all of those points are control points, the T-spline behavior results in something that looks like this. And that is really um, no different than what you would have seen um, creating the primitive. Now, a T-point inserted, so this is a partial column, partial row, right, adds in a new type of point. Now the T-spline behavior will show that there is um, interpolation, right, that's occurring, but the boundary remains the same. Now when we see the star point, here we have control points surrounding, and the star at the center allows the T-spline to interpolate as curvature um, around the edge. So again, getting to you know comfortable with those different types of, uh, of points is really something that is best uh, kind of developed through a few case studies. And that's really what our goal is this afternoon, is to get familiar with creative ways to use T-splines um, to produce organic form. Now, lastly, T-spline surfaces can be converted to untrimmed nerve surface and vice versa without any loss or change to the surface shape. So there's 100% NURBS compatible. So if you take a look up here, we can see that from uh, polygons to T-splines to NURBS, um, the geometry uh, remains uh, consistent uh, without uh, deviation. So T-splines allows designers to add detail only where necessary, create non-rectangular topology, easily edit complex freeform models, and maintain NURBS compatibility. So the opportunities there for you um, as a designer is that it introduces polygonal modeling workflows to Rhino. It has full or partial modeling capabilities, so it's very flexible. It allows you to explore organic forms easily and quickly in an intuitive way. You can export the models that you make for manufacturing without having to remodel them. And it's fully integrated into the user interface in Rhino 5. So this afternoon, we're going to be looking at how to model with T-splines using primitives, using planes, or polygon, polygonal modeling, converting uh, lines to T-splines, working with piping functionality, and then lastly, we'll end on a case study that really looks at T-splines modeling from A to Z. So the first four um, exercises are going to be kind of fast, um, you know, we're going to just use 
uh, be, you know, diving into the tool and just trying to explore it and see a few different ways that you can use it. And the last exercise will be a little bit longer so that we can focus our attention on um, the full pipeline of working with T-splines.